Okay, speaking of music, we definitely, this is what we need to do for next month. We gotta get music for you. I don't know what, what it's gonna be. I got some ideas. But our next speaker, and our last speaker of the evening, is always entertaining and fun to listen to. He had this great idea a couple of years ago when he saw what was happening in this country. He's like, how am I getting, I got, hold on. Okay. Um, I don't know. <laughs> there, uh, a couple years ago, when asked what, he asked this question, what am I going to do? You know, how am I going to get active in politics? So he had this great idea. I am going to start by putting up one sign every week until Obama's out of office. And sadly, that didn't end uh, last January. Who knew when you got reelected? I know. So he's still putting up signs. And now... His signs are going to get distributed far more because we're going to put them in the Tea Party magazine every time we publish. Without further ado, our own Craig, the sign guy. Okay, so I'm now on sign number 187 and about another 150 to go or something like that. Uh, so this was the sign for the first week of October. When sewage is at the ceiling, you don't raise the ceiling, you pump sewage. <laughs> so that was my uh, advice to our politicians. And it's, it's amazing, that was just a few weeks ago that we hit this debt ceiling of uh, October 17th. 80,000 employees were furloughed, non-essential employees. And my question is, if they're non-essential, then why don't we bring them back? So it was about 17% of government spending. We closed memorials, we closed the federal parks, we closed state parks with any kind of federal funding in it. We closed the World War II uh, monument, which was just uh, atrocious. We also closed, to show you the, the reach of our federal government, we closed the memorial in France on the, on the coast of Normandy. We also closed oceans in Florida, access to the ocean in Florida, and access to the Grand Canyon. And the message is, federal government reach is vast, reaching all the way to Normandy and France, and even has metaphysical power over oceans and a 70 million year old Grand Canyon. The great and all powerful Oz has spoken. <laughs> Week number two. So our debt was at 16.7 trillion. And this sign, debt debate, how much more broke than bankrupt should we be? So now larger than everything created in the United States. So our GDP is at 15 trillion. Our debt is now more than, than, than what we produce. Now most people can't conceptualize trillions of dollars and what these numbers are. And I wrote an editorial that was published and actually Michelle Bachman in one of her speeches used this number. But if you take all the profit from the top 500 companies of the United States, that profit is equal to $884 billion. So if you look at our debt, our debt is 19 times what the top 500 companies make in profit. Or, if you confiscate all the wealth of the top 500 companies for 19 years, it'll pay for our, our national debt. Our unfunded liabilities is $90 trillion. And there's a big debate about what the real number is. But the total GDP of the world is $70 trillion. So our unfunded liabilities are 1.2 times the total GDP of the world. And then um, Jake shared this, that after the debt ceiling deal was made, all of a sudden our debt went up by $809 billion in the month of October. That's because of all the funny accounting. Uh, so if you want to know what your share is, just that month, debt went up $3,567 per household. Just that month. 
week number three. This was inspired by Beth, and Beth isn't here today. Beth had this t-shirt that said, Republican, Democrat, pissed off, check. And uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of people stopped and took pictures of this, uh, this sign. And, uh, I'm sure they sent it to all their relatives and friends. Uh, the Rasmussen poll on October 13th said that 13% believe we are going in the right direction. 80% of America believe that we're going in the wrong direction. The week of Hall Halloween. Halloween wish, may the spirit of Thomas Jefferson haunt our politicians. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, they do. They think he's an evil person. Um, so, you know, over the last three or four years, I've probably written, I don't know, 20 or 30 editorials. And maybe 50% are published. And I thought I had a really fantastic editorial. And uh, two weeks before uh, Halloween, I sent it in to the Star Tribune, and I got... Nothing was published, no response. So I rewrote it and gave an exclusive to the Pioneer Press. They agreed to publish, they called me, they agreed to publish, and it wasn't published. But I am going to read you the editorial that I wrote. And uh, Dave Benner helped me about who really were the key founding fathers that are behind the principles of the Tea Party. And Dave is just a, just a tremendous asset in his knowledge of the Constitution. So here was my editorial that was not published by the Pioneer Press for your enjoyment. The Tea Party has been accused by politicians and the media of being, quote, terrorists, jihadists, arsonists, suicide bombers, hostage takers, racists, blackmailers, gangsters, kidnappers, and enemies of the state. Unquote. If this really is the case, then why haven't the members of the Tea Party been arrested? Since this political re rhetoric isn't working, maybe this Halloween President Obama can go after the Tea Party's leaders. Their last known residents are Thomas Jefferson at Monticello, Virginia, George Mason at Gunston Hall, Virginia. Robert Sherman at Grove Street Cemetery, Connecticut, and Thomas Paine, who's still a fugitive. Maybe the NSA can help with Thomas Paine's, who remains are still somewhere between America and England, as, as we still don't know where Thomas Paine's remains are. If only we had politicians like these four great Americans my wish for this Halloween is that the spirit of Thomas Jefferson haunt our politicians daily and remind them of the Constitution they have all sworn to obey. Craig the Sign Guy, Woodbury, Minnesota. <laughs> So the last one, let me explain how Obamacare works. <laughs> now I'm puzzled at, after this thing. Is, you know, for all good projects, there's a flowchart. <laughs> and I looked at this flowchart, and I saw down here in this corner, it says, physician. So I thought, well, I wonder where the patient is. And I thought, well, it has to be connected with the physician some way, and I followed all these lines, and I just couldn't, couldn't find it. And lo and behold, it's over here. Here's the patient. There's the connection between the doctor and the patient somewhere in that map. And you wonder why Obamacare doesn't work. You know, I used to live in Antwerp, Belgium for four years, and I went to the doctor. I would call this nurse to make an appointment. The doctor would treat me. He came out with like a little fishing tackle box that, that carried his money. And I'd pay him in cash, and that was it. That's how healthcare worked in, uh, in Belgium, at least for uh, foreign service employees. 
So my sign this week is Obamacare learning. <laughs> you can't polish a turd. <laughs> so I knew Janice, my censor, wouldn't approve this. So I asked her 10-year-old granddaughter if she thought it was kind of over the top. And she says, no, I think that's okay, Grandpa. <laughs> so the four big lies, and you've heard it on the, on the news the last couple of weeks, you can't keep your plan, or you can keep your plan if you like it. You can keep your doctor. Period. Period, whoever Mr. Period is. A family of four will save $2,500, and it will reduce the deficit. All of these are blatant lies. So it was reported in the Federal Register in June 2010 on page, if you follow this, 34,552 that 66% of small employer plans will be canceled, 45% of large employer plans were projected to be canceled. So this is the official document of our United States government. Forbes estimated that based on those numbers, 93 million Americans would lose their health care. So it's just all blatant lies that it was well known back in, in June of 2010 about what happened when this was implemented. Now, how can anyone still think that socialism can work. And in my uh, sign email, I had a, uh, a little note that in Venezuela, they nationalized the paper industry in Venezuela. And now there's a toilet paper crisis in Venezuela. And they actually have armed guards at the toilet paper factories, so nobody steals the toilet paper. So if a government cannot control the supply and demand of toilet paper, how in the world is a government going to control the supply and demand of health care for 310 million people? So my conclusion was, you can perfume a pig, but you cannot polish a turd. <laughs> and I asked my granddaughter, she says, what happens? She says, Grandpa, all you get is a smear. <laughs> So that's it. Thank you very much. Oh, so for anybody new here that's not on the sign list, my email is at the bottom here. Uh, so I do send out a weekly email that goes direct to uh, probably you know 500 people, but with all the forwards and posts, I, I don't know. It it goes to thousands of thousands of people. Oh, did this go around or is that from before? Oh, oh, this is from the State Fair. Anybody sign up the State Fair? I will edit this week. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. All right. Uh, Jack, remind me, we completely forgot, uh, you know, the legal uh, ways of taking money. Um, when you sign up for membership, it's separate from political uh, contributions. Our political contributions fund the toolkit. And what we always ask at our Tea Party events is, if you got a couple extra bucks, you know, after leaving a tip for these wonderful wait staff, throw it in this bucket, help us support the toolkit, get down the road. We actually just started a new, or revived, a Tea Party in Red Wing. And Jack, I don't know if you saw this, we got an email, uh, like, about five o'clock this afternoon, about one over in Hutchinson. So, this helps us take the Tea Party in the road, so whatever you can throw in a couple bucks helps out tremendously. Uh, we'll pass that bucket around.